The UK Ministry of Defense recently announced the successful testing of their Dragonfire laser-directed energy weapon system, and it has since been touted by media outlets as everything from the answer to missile defense to a replacement for missiles themselves. But as cool as this system genuinely is, none of that is true. In fact, most of everything you've heard about this Dragonfire laser isn't true. So let's talk about what this Dragonfire laser system really is and what it's actually capable of, but just as importantly, what it isn't as well. First of all, the Dragonfire Laser Directed Energy Weapon System was first announced by the UK Ministry of Defense back in 2017, and early iterations of the system went into testing in 2018. But then the program ran into some delays, starting with some small technical setbacks and then longer delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So it wasn't until somewhat recently that the UK MOD was able to complete and then announce a series of what they called high-powered tests against airborne targets. But just how high-powered it was the UK MOD is insane. But previous interviews and media reporting from within the UK indicate that this Dragonfire weapon aims to be a 50 kilowatt class system. Now that makes it about half as powerful as Israel's Iron Beam that drew headlines earlier this year, and maybe about one-sixth as powerful as the laser weapon systems Lockheed Martin has recently been delivering to the U.S. Army and U.S. Navy. Now, that low power output does not mean that Dragonfire can't be very effective, however, and the UK MOD made sure to highlight some of the biggest advantages of these sorts of weapons in their press releases. These advantages have been characterized by the U.S. Navy in the past as the depth of magazine advantage and the cost exchange ratio advantage, both of which are pretty related. The depth of magazine advantage speaks to the amount of ammunition you can keep on hand for any given weapon system. In terms of air defense, most inbound missiles these days are intercepted by missiles themselves, and as such, you can only carry so many of these interceptor missiles in a ground-based air defense system or on board a naval vessel. A laser, on the other hand, doesn't run out of ammunition until you run out of power, giving you the ability to keep on firing at inbound threats much longer than you would with a traditional kinetic missile interceptor. Now, the cost exchange ratio advantage speaks to this as well, but this goes into how much it costs to replace each of those missile interceptors that are fired. Today's advanced interceptors can cost anywhere from hundreds of thousands of dollars to tens of millions of dollars piece. And right now, U.S. Navy and Royal Navy vessels are using these sorts of interceptors to shoot down fairly low-cost Houthi anti-ship missiles and drones. And there's been no shortage of criticism for using these multi-million dollar interceptors to shoot down these tens of thousand dollar threats. But a laser like Dragonfire, on the other hand, is estimated to cost by the UK MOD as little as 10 pounds per shot. And that's right in keeping with U.S. Navy assessments that say that their directed energy weapons cost between $1 and $10 per shot. In other words, not only can you keep on firing these directed energy weapons for a lot longer than you could kinetic interceptors, but it also won't break the bank to do so either. But that doesn't mean that lasers are all they're cracked up to be by headlines like this one by the BBC. You see, there are still massive engineering hurdles that need to be overcome before lasers can be an effective means of missile defense, and even bigger engineering hurdles that would need to be overcome to use lasers as any kind of long-range offensive weapon system. First and foremost, the biggest variable here is power output. Now, a few years back, the U.S. Navy used a 150-kilowatt class laser called Helios to take down a small remote-control airborne drone. Now, this is about three times the power output of the UK's Dragonfire system, and it still took about 15 seconds of sustained fire to burn through the side of the fuselage of that drone and damage enough of its internal weapon systems to bring the aircraft down. And it would take a whole lot more than that in order to take out an inbound missile. According to an assessment published by the Congressional Research Service, you need about 100 kilowatts of outgoing power to take down an inbound rocket or mortar. Now, that is about twice 
twice the reported power output of the UK's Dragonfire. And you would need about 300 kilowatts, or about six times Dragonfire's output, in order to take down a larger drone or to burn through the side of the fuselage of an inbound cruise missile. Importantly, you're not going to burn through the nose cone of most missiles with a 300 kilowatt class laser, because these nose cones are designed to withstand a great deal of heat and friction from flying at high subsonic or even supersonic speeds. And then you would need about 1,000 kilowatts, or at least one megawatt, to take down an incoming ballistic missile. That's about 20 times the power output of Dragonfire. But again, it is important to understand how valuable this laser technology can be for the UK Navy. You see, you can increase the power output in a lot of these laser weapon systems, but if you can't reliably target and then maintain a lock on a target as it flies through the sky, your laser isn't going to be much good at all. And this is something the US Navy has learned the hard way. It's been fielding similar laser weapons on its ships since at least 2009, starting with the Laser Weapon System, or LAWS, which started out at 30 kilowatts, which is a bit weaker than Dragonfire. The US Navy then moved on to Odin, which was again about 30 kilowatts, and then eventually to Helios, which started at 60 kilowatts and was ramped up to 150. Right now, the Navy is working on fielding Hellcap, or the High Energy Laser or countermeasure for anti-ship cruise missiles, which promises to be in the 300 kilowatt range, which is right around the same as the more advanced systems Lockheed Martin has delivered to the US Army. And Lockheed has announced development on a 500 kilowatt system that should be forthcoming in the very near future. In other words, while the UK's Dragonfire is not the science fiction technology it's been made out to be in headlines and by content creators on platforms like this, it is a vital step toward the UK fielding very effective directed energy countermeasures to inbound aerial threats. As for how far away those threats can be, right now systems like the UK's Dragonfire and the US Navy's Helios are really only effective at ranges of up to about one mile because of two real issues, atmospheric scattering and thermal blooming. Atmospheric scattering is basically the way the atmosphere and dust and particles floating in it can dissipate a laser beam over distance. And thermal blooming is the way a laser beam can superheat the air it's passing through, creating a bit of a lensing effect that will knock the beam off course and reduce its accuracy. The Navy believes high-powered systems may eventually be effective at ranges of up to 10 miles, but they're still not sure they'll ever be effective much further than that, at least in atmosphere, because of these challenges. And because both ballistic and hypersonic missiles travel at a minimum of around a mile per second, that means that at best, these sorts of directed energy weapons may have just 10 seconds to burn through and destroy or knock one of these weapons off course before they impact their target. And that may really not be enough time to be an effective countermeasure against these sorts of systems. But what these systems could be extremely effective for is taking down a swarm of low-cost and fairly slow-moving drones. Drone swarms are a huge threat to all kinds of defense assets because of their ability to overwhelm air defenses because of things like running out of interceptors to shoot them down, or the high cost of replacing those interceptors versus the low cost of replacing those drones. Low-cost directed energy weapon systems like Dragonfire or Helios could reorient their targeting at the speed of light, taking down a whole swarm of drones without expending all of its high-dollar interceptors and leaving that same area undefended against more extreme threats like ballistic or hypersonic weapons. In other words, directed energy weapon systems systems are unlikely to replace advanced integrated air defense systems anytime soon, but they are very likely to become a part of those integrated air defense systems, serving as a supplement or eventually even a replacement for things like close-in weapon systems or sea whizzes that are primarily effective at short ranges of a mile or less, but extremely effective against exactly these sorts of of threats. So, while the UK's Dragonfire weapon may not be ushering us into the Star Wars era anytime soon, it is a very important development for the Royal Navy, and it will all but certainly become the backbone of a variety of air defense efforts to come.